The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobe and welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down at Huron Tractor in Chatham, Ontario, catching up with Turner Sanford. Turner, how's it going? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm, hey, it's a beautiful spring-like day here. It's and wonderful. Uh, and we, uh, I guess we're at that point where we're sort of doing some final touches on the planner. We'll be rolling pretty soon. I want to talk to you about, you know, where we need to focus on the planner. And, you know, you've got some interesting data here that really shows, you know, population, spacing, uniformity, some things that can, you, where you can really fine tune and make a difference on the planner. That's right. Yeah, so some things to consider when we're thinking about uh, our planters, you know, um, what can kind of impact our yield. Uh, ultimately, what it's going to come down to that we're looking at nowadays is uniform emergence. Uh, you know, population is still very important, planting windows still very important, singulation, you know, our skips and doubles still very important. But at the end of the day, what we really need to focus on is uniform emergence. And we really want to see all of those plants come up within 24 hours of each other to give everybody a good equal fighting chance. Yeah, and you've got some interesting data here. I mean, like, you know, when it comes to uniformity, 10 to 18 bushels, I think 5 to 9%. That's right. It is the, maybe the most important part of the plant. I do really believe so. So today what we'll do, uh, we're going to talk about some tuning tips that we have to ensure that uh, we're doing the best we can and putting our best foot forward to get that uniform emergence. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's take a walk around the planter. Alrighty, so our first stop that we're gonna talk about uh, and a mechanical adjustment we can make to ensure our even emergence is going to be our gauge wheel depth adjustment. So this is going to be the first thing we can do to get us in the ballpark of putting that seed where we want it. Now, you know, a common thing that we come across is well, my planter was set to three and three last year, or it was set to three and four notches last year, or say the neighbor's got his set to four and four, uh, and his corn looks really good. Ultimately, what we would like to see at the end of the day is that you get out and check and make sure that we're hitting our, our proper depth. What happens over time is that our gauge wheel arms here can actually wear. So this handle doesn't necessarily mean what it used to when your planter was new. As things wear, loosen up a bit, we should be making adjustments uh, year over year. Ultimately, the best way to ensure that you're hitting that, that seed depth is to get out and check, really. That'll be, your, that'll be your, your number one tool you have in the spring to evaluate your depth performance. So we've talked about our gauge wheel depth adjustment. That should be able to get us in the ballpark uh, of where we would like to place our seed. Now, how do we maintain that, uh, that mechanical adjustment that we've made throughout changing ground conditions, changing ground speed, say obstacles in the field, whether it's say you're the, uh, a stony river bottom uh, compared to a sandy knoll or a clay part in the farm. When we talk about maintaining this adjustment, we're gonna ultimately look to our downforce system. So what we have here on this planter specifically is John Deere's individual row hydraulic system. It's one of three options that we offer from the factory, the other two being a pneumatic, so an airbag bladder system, as well as heavy duty downforce springs. We've introduced our first initial adjustment here with our gauge wheel uh, margin adjustment to set our initial depth. Then we've talked about our hydraulic system that we've got on our John Deere planter. So, what we currently have here is individual row hydraulic downforce, and it's going to work in unison with a gauge wheel margin sensor in here. So for those of you that are maybe not so familiar uh, with this system, we hear the word margin a lot, and it causes a lot of confusion. So what margin is, is the additional force needed to be applied to penetrate the ground and keep our, our gauge wheels where we want. You say, well, you know, we've got uh, this heavy row unit, we've got downforce, what do you mean we need additional? So when we talk about additional downforce needed in margin, uh, first off we'll talk about all the forces being applied towards the ground. So say we have our downforce set at 200 pounds, right? We also have the weight of the row unit. Now the nice thing about a central fill planter such as this, or a planter that has mini hoppers, is that the weight of the hoppers in the row unit should be consistent across the whole length of the planter. When we talk about a planter that has 1.6 bushel 
or three bushel hoppers, they're filled bulk with seed. They obviously weigh heavier when they're full. As you plant through the field and you're, you're planting that seed, your level's decreasing, that row unit actually gets lighter and would need more. So this is a, a good example of a, a say an e even an easier to set planter just because we have a consistent weight across the whole unit. So we've got 200 pounds of downforce here. Say we've got, uh, just for figures, 100 pounds worth of row unit and seed here. We've got 300 pounds total of force being applied to the ground. Now, say we're into some tougher ground, uh, some heavier clay, we might get 150 pounds of resistance back on this gauge wheel margin sensor. If we do some quick math, we've got 300 pounds going down, we've got 150 pounds coming back up. Our margin, or the force we would need to apply to cancel that out would be 150 pounds. Now that's an adjustment and a reading that we can see in the cab now through a sensor that's uh, here on our gauge wheels. Why is that so important? So when we think about having good ride quality and ground contact, what that means is that we are putting the seed and defining that seed trench at the depth and the shape that we want. If our gauge wheels are bouncing around as such, our seed trench could be bouncing around as such. We could be planting the seed at uh, different depths. So we need to make sure we've got our good margin to ensure good ride contact and ground contact uh, quality for our gauge wheels. So before we get into our closing system to ensure our good seed to soil contact, uh, what I'd like to do is just discuss a little trick that we do with our growers to evaluate uh, the performance of your downforce system and how we're defining that seed trench. So what I would typically do is I would take a closing wheel. Now this one specifically, we would just back the air system off, but we'll tie up or ratchet strap up the closing wheels uh, and you can tie it off to a, a, a hook point on the frame. But what we want to do is actually not close up uh, we don't want to close up our seed trench. The reason being is it'll actually, this allows us to see the seed trench that we formed. It allows us to see the seed spacing in that trench without it being covered in soil. And it allows us to evaluate how our downforce and how our gauge wheel system is performing. So if we seen, now obviously this is going to vary a bit with your ground conditions. So uh, that needs to be kept in mind. Uh, but if we see too much margin or too much downforce, the problems we can run into is that we've defined that seed trench too much and we've caused smear. So what can happen is that we see tomahawk roots uh, once our seed germinates and the, the roots actually can't go down and penetrate through the seed trench. They stay in the seed trench and they grow out, not allowing them to get access to nutrients. So if we see that with our closing wheel system up, we know that, hey, maybe we're applying too much downforce uh, to the planter. What we can do is back that downforce adjustment off in the cab without sacrificing our good ride or our ride quality, right? We don't wanna see our, our gauge wheels bouncing. If we have a seed trench that's too loose, what we can do is create air pockets between the soil and the seed, or we can have seeds dropped at different, uh, different depths in that seed trench. And then ultimately our closing system won't be able to perform the way it should in order to ensure that good seed to soil contact because we've created pockets. So to wrap up the three adjustments that we can physically control uh, to ensure that we're, good, we're going to uh, work towards good emergence is going to be our closing wheel system. Our closing wheel system can come in two different ways. Here we've got an optional pneumatic system uh, and the conventional way would be a T-handle very similar to this and it's a spring-loaded system that we would move uh, based on our ground conditions. So what we've done, we set our gauge wheels where we want them, we set our downforce to where we think it should be, we've evaluated that performance by lifting up our closing wheels, checking the seed trench that we've left behind, uh, making sure that you know, we're not compacting the sidewall of that seed trench, and then ultimately what we need to do is set our closing wheels to close in that seed trench uh, and give us good seed to soil contact. Now, what's nice about having a pneumatic system is that in compared to our spring-loaded system where we had four or five set adjustments, 
we can actually find some middle ground or some incremental adjustments with this compared to uh, the larger range that we had before.